Stocks in the US are nearly flat today after a winning session for stock exchanges as investors await a rate decision from the Fed. Meanwhile, the yen slid to a four-month low against the dollar. Investors broadly anticipate the Fed to keep rates unchanged, but they will be scouring the so-called dot plot for clues as to how many rates will be implemented and when. There was also weakness in the tech sector in the US with Alphabet and Meta platforms and a few others losing. Analysts now wonder whether the artificial intelligence rally is slowing as other parts of the market gain traction. Interestingly, the yen is languishing near a four-month low against the US dollar, but also a 16-year low against the euro. That's despite the BOJ's move to end its ultra-loose monetary policy. For more on this, let's go to Mike Ingram, who is in Independent Market Strategies, and he joins us now live from London. Mike, great to have you on the programme. So let's start from the Fed. What do you expect in terms of the easing monetary policy? When do you think it will start and why? Well, as you said, I think the market would be astounded at this point if uh, the Fed delivered anything more than rates on hold. If you look at the Fed fund futures at the moment, there's expecting only a 1% chance there'll be a rate cut later on today. Um, looking further forward, um, the market's thinking that we probably won't see a, a quarter point cut probably until June or July of this year. And for 2024 as a whole, probably somewhere between two to four cuts um, in total, maybe one percentage point at, at, on a maximum. Generally, thinking about three cuts is probably where, where, the, where the, uh, the median forecast is. And, you know, in all this, you know, we've got to remember that, you know, the U.S. economy, the outlook for the U.S. economy has come on a long way over the last year. I mean, we had two and a half percent real GDP growth in the U.S. last year. It wasn't that long ago that people were talking about a recession in 2023. Soft landing this year. Um, but that also means that you know inflation has been quite sticky, service inflation running at about five percent, and that's what the Fed is actually um, you know worried about. You know we, we we have seen peak rates now. The thing is, inflation is still a bit sticky, so the Fed is probably going to be on hold for the foreseeable future. And as you say, let's look at that dot plot and see what uh, Ch uh, Chair Powell has to say at the presser. What about the tech sector? We are seeing it slightly losing momentum, some uh, stocks in particular. Is this a, just a technical correction? I mean, are investors just cashing in at this point? Or do you think this is the start of something new? Are valuation stretched? Is there a possibility of a bubble there in the tech sector? Well, well certainly valuations are challenging in the sector. And if you look at the market leader, which is NVIDIA, I mean, that, that stock's up over 500% over the last... Uh, uh, 15 months since the start mm. of 2023, um, and it's up 85% thus far this year. You're right that over the last couple of weeks, um, the sector as a whole has been um, struggling somewhat. NVIDIA itself, has, uh, the share price has pretty much been treading water despite the release of the new Blackwell chips. Um, and you've seen other, uh, other players such as AMD, you know, post 10, 15, 20% declines. There's a lot of growth already priced in. If you look at the tech sector as a whole, it's on about 45 times 2024 projected earnings. That's about a 50% premium to the 10-year average. So yeah, there is certainly scope for disappointment and a lot of it hangs on whether AI is going to deliver on semi, um, semi stocks such as Nvidia. Mike Ingram, thank you very much for your analysis. Now let's uh, take a quick look at some of the top stories from around the world. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi has arrived in Australia for the first time in seven years. It comes as the two countries hope to repair ties after a trade spat, which hit a peak in 2020 when Canberra called for an independent investigation into the origin of COVID-19. Beijing responded by imposing billions of dollars worth of tariffs on Australian imports, most of which have been lifted since a change of government in Canberra two years ago. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration Chief Michael Whitaker has said Boeing must improve its safety standards following a series of errors that have caused increased scrutiny over the aircraft manufacturer's practices. A recent audit by the FAA found that the company placed more emphasis on mass production than safety and quality. Microsoft names Mustafa Suleiman as the CEO of a new team that handles the company's consumer-facing AI products, including Copilot, 
Bing and Edge. Microsoft also hires several employees of Suleiman's inflection AI startup seeking to defend its lead against rising competition from Google. Suleiman co-founded the AI lab DeepMind in 2010, which was later acquired by Google in 2014. And British clothing chain Ted Baker is to go into administration across Europe due to outstanding debt and a difficult retail environment. The news comes more than a year after it sold itself to the US-based fashion group. US owners Authentic Brands, the group behind brands such as Reebok and David Beckham, says the retailer would continue to operate online. Currently, Ted Baker employs more than 900 staff that operates 46 stores. Thank <laughs> you.